Hi, a few months ago I saw Angie Judah make a project using Stampin' Up! supplies and she made a triangular box like this and when I watched the video I just thought it would be so easy to recreate using Scan & Cut canvas. So this is what I've come up with. All this was made in Scan & Cut canvas. The oval scallop is a basic shape and so is the oval and then I designed the three-sided box and made some matting layers for it and this like flagged pennant shape here. It's basically just a copy of what she made, only I've designed it to be able to cut with the scan and cut. It's um, a box that once you seal it, you've got to break into to open. It's not got flaps on it, but it's four inches, four inches by two inches. So this is what I'm gonna show you how I designed in scan and cut canvas in today's project. So I'm in Scan and Cut Canvas and I've got a blank page open. I'm going to come over to the basic shapes and I'm going to choose a rectangle. Once I've got the rectangle on the page, I'm going to hold the shift key down and rotate it twice because this is the orientation that I want. I'm going to come to the properties box. I'm going to untick maintain aspect ratio because I want to set the height and the width independently. So I want it two inches wide and I want it four inches high. And then I'm just going to move that out of the way. Then I want a triangle. So I came down to this first basic triangle here. And this triangle needs to be two inches wide at this bottom edge here because we're going to line that up and weld it to the top and the bottom of this rectangle. So with this triangle selected I'm going to tick the maintain aspect ratio and on the height here I'm going to take this down to two inches and sorry on the width I've taken it down to two inches and it's adjusted the height for me automatically, which is fine. So with the triangle selected, I'm going to right click and create a duplicate. And then I'm going to hold the shift key down and rotate this round. So now I'm going to line all these three shapes up. So I'll try and zoom in. So what I want to do now, I want all three selected, so I'm selecting the triangle, holding the shift key down, selecting the rectangle, and while I've still got the shift key held down, selecting the other triangle. I'm going to come to edit, I'm just going to align them all to the left, so all the left edges all line up, and then I'm going to just click on the page to deselect, and I'm just going to zoom in on this section a bit more. And what I want to do now is line up the top edge of the rectangle with the bottom edge of the triangle so that they just overlap but so that I've not got any overlap in the corner here or as little as possible. We can always correct that later. So I'm going to select the triangle and using the up arrow on my keyboard I'm just going to shift it up and then click off it and see what it looks like. Now that doesn't look too bad. So now I'm just going to scroll down and I'm going to select the bottom triangle and move this one down so that I get an overlap here, but I don't want any edges sticking out if possible. But I want to be able to weld them. So I'm just going to zoom back to the mat. So edit, and weld and see if I've got enough to weld them together. Now I've still got lines there so they're obviously over, not overlapped enough to be able to weld. So I'm just going to zoom in, select the triangle, bring it back down a bit more until I hopefully get an overlap and do the same with this triangle. Move this one up so that I hopefully get an overlap here. So again, I'll select everything and go to Edit, Weld. This time the lines have disappeared so they've welded together. Now I'm going to select 
this shape now and I'm going to right click and create two more duplicates. Then I'm going to line these up so that the overlap on this edge here and the same with this one, this edge overlaps this one. And I'm only doing this roughly for now because I'm going to zoom in in a few minutes. But for now, I'm going to select everything. I'm going to go to edit and I'm going to line them all up by the bottom edge here. And that way I know they're all in line. Then I'm going to click off and I'm just going to zoom in just on this section here. And then I can see whether I've got an overlap. So I'm going to select this left one because I can see I've got an overlap, but I've got a gap in the middle bigger than on here. So I'm going to move this one to the left by using the arrow on my keyboard and then just click anywhere on the page to deselect. And then I'm going to select this shape and move this to the right because again, I can see I've got a bit of a gap in the middle and I want to just try and get a solid line here. Okay, now I'm going to zoom back to the mat now hopefully those three are overlapped just enough to be able to weld. You don't want to overlap them too much because you'll end up reducing the size of your box here that you started off as two inches wide. So while they're all selected, edit weld. And they, they, were, well, they were overlapped enough to be able to weld without you know, hopefully decreasing the size too much. So now what I want to do is add a glue tab on here. So I'm going to come back to this rectangle, rotate it. I'm going to make it half an inch wide and four inches high. So I'm going to untick the maintain aspect ratio, take this down to 0 0.50, which is half an inch, and take this up to four inches. And I'm going to position this on this edge. And again, I'm just going to zoom in so that I can see when I've got an overlap. I only want to just overlap. I'll zoom back out. Now, I'm going to select everything and I just want this in the centre of this shape, on this central edge, not in the middle. So I'm going to come to edit and I can never remember which one it is. This one. Yeah, it's middle. So now that has put this rectangle in the middle of this shape here. So again, I'm going to select both and go to Edit Weld. And that's given me my glue tab, but I just want to angle these corners a bit. So I'm just going to double click to expose the nodes. And I'm going to click on this node and just drag it in a little bit to like make it on an angle. And then the same with this one. Trying to keep this edge as straight as possible although it's not vital because this will be a glue tab and it will be inside but just by angling it a little bit like this just helps it fit together better when you come to glue it so now we need to put our fold lines in if you don't want to put any fold lines in you don't have to you can just put this in a scoreboard and put them in with um, a bone folder but one thing I am going to do is just look on this edge here and zoom in on these corners just to have a look at where I first welded them. And I don't know if you can see, but this is sticking out a little bit. So I'm going to double click to expose the nodes and I'm just going to try and angle this up a little bit better. So straighten it up and then come down to the bottom one and do the same. Double click, grab a node, I've not got the right one there, so let's just zoom in a little bit more and drag that down and go back to matte. Okay, now I'm going to put the fold lines in. So I'm going to come over to the path icon, come over here, and the minute I put the mouse near this corner where this angle meets this straight line, you'll see a box highlighted. And that's trying to anchor it on that point, And that's what we want. So I'm going to left click and let go. Then press the shift key down. And then I'm just going to drag the mouse in a, in a line. And it will. this won't move anywhere because I've got the shift key held down. And I'm going to anchor it on this corner. 
and you'll see soon as I get near that corner another little box appears and then I'm going to double click to anchor it I'm going to come to the properties box I'm going to make it a cut line and make it a dash line and then I'm going to do the same down here so I'm going to come back to the path icon bring the mouse over here left click let go hold the shift key down drag the line out till I see the other anchor point appear and double click again cut line and dash line and then I want one here so path line come to here left click hold the shift key down drag out and then I'm going to put these last two forward lines in so again the minute I come here you'll get an anchor point left click drag out make it a cut line make it a dash line and do the same here Now the outside of the box is down as a cut or draw line and in this particular case it doesn't really matter but I showed you how I'd made a scallop shape and an oval with some writing on and I want to use the scan and cut to draw. I'm actually going to assign this outer shape as just purely and simply a cut line because it will make it easier when you come to cut your project for choosing cut and draw lines. So we've got the outside, just I think I've just moved that. So we've got the outside selected and as a cut line. And then we've got all these other lines assigned as dash lines. I'm going to select everything, right click and group. And that's the box made. Now, the way that I created the rest of it was I'm just going to hold the shift key down and rotate it to get this just in this orientation because this is how the box will be. So to put the scallop and the oval on here, basically I chose a scallop and then I chose an oval. Um, can't remember which one I chose, I think it was this one. And then I sized the oval down until it looked as though it sat within the scallop kind of in proportion selected both right click and grouped them and then I just dragged it down until it looked as though it was going to be the right size for the front of my project and that looks about right so now I'm going to ungroup them and separate them I'm going to select the scallop come to the properties box and make it just a cut line only and then I'm going to come to this one again I'm going to go back to the properties and I'm going to make it just a cut line only okay so the next thing I did was I put some text on the label so I went to the font converter and I typed happy birthday and then I chose a font. Now last time I chose Seru's Flower Ding, but for this I'm just going to choose anything. Um, it doesn't really matter, but another one that kind of I know writes relatively okay is Grandma's Garden. So I'm going to click Save and put that onto my desktop. Close the converter down and then I'm going to come back to the SVG icon. Go to the desktop which is where I've just saved that grandma's garden and open it. And as you can see it brings it all in and it brings it in as separate letters. So I want to just select the birthday, right click and group. And then I want to select the word happy, right click and group. I'm going to position them how I want them to, to look on this label. Select both of them, right click and group. And then I'm going to shrink them down until they fit on this, rect on this oval.
And when I'm happy with the size, while they're selected, I'm going to come to the properties box and make them just a draw line and close that down. And then I'm going to select both and center them to each other. And while they're both selected, I'm going to make them a group. And then the final thing I did was made my little banner. And again, I went back to the basic shapes, got um, a rectangle. And then I know that this is four inches wide, but I didn't want it that big. So with this rectangle selected, I went to the properties box. Again, I'm going to leave the maintain aspect ratio unticked because I want to size them independently. I'm going to take this down to about 3.25 and the height down to about half an inch and just place it on the box and put the scallop over it because that was the biggest bit and that gives me an idea of how it's going to look when it's all put together. So again with this selected I'm just going to make sure it's just a cut line and then I'll bring it up here so you can see it and I'm going to zoom in and then what I did, I double clicked to expose the nodes and then I wanted this line highlighting. So I clicked one of the nodes until I got this line highlighted and that brings up the node editing functions and I clicked on this one here that says add a point. And by clicking on that, it puts a point in the middle of the line I've got selected. So now I can drag that in and just make it like a banner and then I'm going to select one of these nodes. Now I click this node and it's selected this line and that's not what I want. So I need to collect, select this node and that selects that line for me and do exactly the same. Add node and then drag this in and this gives me my flag shape. And when I go back to fit to map, you should be able to see it. So it's all going to fit together when it's finished like this. And then the final thing I did was made the matting layers. So I know that I started off with a rectangle that was four by three. So again, I'm going to come back to the rectangle. I'm going to come to properties and I'm going to make this one. Sorry, this started off as four by two. So I'm going to make it 1.75 inches high here, the matting layer for, to go on here and I'm going to make it 3.7 wide and just place it on there and then click off and have a look at it. And that is that looks right for me with, a, with the amount of border all the way around. But you can make this smaller, it's entirely up to you. And then what I'm going to do with this one is just to try and get it to fit on the mat easier. Just going to rotate it and I'm going to make three of them. So right click duplicate put my duplicate there, make another one, move this one over so it's still on the mat. I've got a little bit of a gap. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to save this and then what I would do, open this in your machine and anything that you want cutting out of the same colour card, I would try and line up all on this side. So my base box was white and my flag was white, so I put that there and then I had a white oval with my sentiment on and then this I cut in another colour, so I'll put that down there and the three matting layers that were cut in designer series paper are all here. And then give it a name, I'll just call it um, video triangle box and save it and then download it and that's all I did. Took it to the machine and brought the pattern up. I selected these four items on this side and deleted them and loaded my mat up with a piece of white card on this side of the mat and then I sent it to cut and then I took the blade out without unloading the card from the machine, put my pen in and got it to write my greeting and then I just went back to the home button brought the pattern up again and then this time I selected everything on this side and deleted it 
and I loaded up my mat with some designer series paper at this top side of the mat and a piece of card down here and I cut those and then it's just so simple to put together you put some glue on this tab <coughs> and then you fold two of your triangles in and on the inside of your last triangle you just put some glue and that's what holds it all together. So I hope you found that helpful. If you like the video please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.